Hello YouTuber. This is a video about this cassette player. Hello YouTuber. This is a video about this reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder and I wasn't going to talk but I thought, do you know what? It's live compared to what you're going to get in a minute. So you've got a reference and I'm going to plug in the external speakers during the course of the uh, monologue and uh, well that's about it really that's um, all I've got to say it'll stop automatically which is a great feature it stops on the memory stop you've got variable speed playback if you fast forward and rewind it you've got a flying head which I'll show you uh -huh. This is the microphone I used to record this on. Just a standard mic that plugs into there. This, take it off. Now, if I put Q on, and fast forward it, or rewind it, sorry, we're gonna stop at zero anyway. I'll fast forward it. We get a flying head. This wind speed. Spring loaded. I'll knock that off. You've got a 20 dB cut on the mic. Three speeds that change without any gearing problem. You haven't got to stop anything. The power switch doesn't work, which is a common problem on these, apparently monitor line, inputs for these inputs, line in, tuner, auxiliary, phono, recording left right. Um, right, so that's stopped now on zero. So the VU meters, if I cut this light, can you see that? Yes. All right, so if I put it onto, I've recorded it in mono, right? It's a mono mic, so right channel, stereo, I've recorded it, oh. so we'll have it on that channel. Let's rock and roll. Okay. I'm recording this on the channel, on the left channel. No, on the right channel, but I've got it on cha track one of four. I bought this machine from a vide grenier. Now, vide grenier is French for an empty loft. It's an interesting story. I would have probably bought it anyway. Or I should say I would have probably stopped anyway. Because the ladies were selling on the front of their stall they had out a preamplifier. Speaker is not us or the preamplifier. Why did I want a preamplifier, a mixer? Because two weeks earlier I bought a power amplifier and I needed a mixer. But as I say, I probably would have stopped anyway. Bass and treble off. So I said, uh, How much do you want for this mixer then? And she said, 15 euros. It's my husband's, but he's not here at the moment. I said, okay. She said, I've got some speakers in the trailer. Now, this Vigrenier was taking place in a small village all along the main route of the village. People come out from their houses a lot of the time and sell the stuff that they, have, what they want to get rid of. It's open to everybody, not just the people that live in, the, in that village. And uh, behind their stall, there was two sisters, a son and the mother was a trailer with a hood on it like a, um, uh, with an aluminium frame and a cover, a tarpaulin over the top. I said, oh, you've got some speakers in the trailer, have you? Okay, thinking to myself, well, why aren't they out the trailer? Um, so I went over, I went round the back of the, back of the front 
the back of the stall and uh, peered into the back of this trailer, lifted the cover and looked inside and I saw these large speakers that, that you'll see, um, these are USA Martin speakers. They had the, um, just the grills on, the cloth grills, so I peeled them off and saw the damage to the woofer, but thought they looked quite nice. Never heard of Martin before. Um, and there was a load of other stuff in there, speakers, more speakers, a music centre that was on a stand, and, um, and this cassette player, which I was most interested in. Um, she said, well, it was all my father's stuff and we're just taking, selling it to get to raise the money for my mother. True story. So, to cut a long story short, I offered them 40 euros. And I should have said, because 40 euros is quite a good price, really. No. Bear in mind the speakers are bollocksed, and this could have been completely bollocksed. Um, I should have said, I'll take everything in the, in, the, in the trailer. But I didn't, because I'm not the greatest businessman. It's true, I'm not the greatest businessman. I'm not Michael Douglas in Wall Street. Let's listen to this. So what I did get was um, a Philips radio. I got after actually, I went back to pick the stuff and I said, look, I'm going to throw that Philips radio in. And one of the sisters was almost reluctant to, oh, the deal's been done. The other sister was, yeah. I bought the Philips radio. Which does work, but here it doesn't capture anything because the reception's not good. This magnificent N4422, the Martin speakers, 312s or 312, which need four new woofers, woofer, and the mid range is bust, has blown on one of them, which is, which is a sod. Uh, the woofers are in a regular size as well, nine and a half inches to the internal diameter. It's like neither ten, neither eight. You know, um, a pair of speakers that I haven't even plugged in yet because they've got um, dodgy connection, on the back, dodgy wiring connection, um, which is not only a problem, but these are female. <laughs> the female connectors, normally they're male, so you get the prong sticking out. The old style speaker connectors, and these are female. Okay. Um, what else did I buy? Oh, of course, the mixer. Oh, yeah, I bought two mixers often. The mixer that I'd originally seen that she said was fifteen euros. Uh, another mixer that was in the back of the trailer or just in the trailer, not in the back of. The trailer's on the back of the car, but there's no in the back of the trailer. And I left behind a music centre that was, yeah, you know, I was supposed to be honest, I was, I thought, you know what, I'm going to have so much stuff. But, they said to me, we're just going to chuck it away. And I'm like, don't throw it away, take it to a place called Oasis in Lons. They'll be glad to have it. They said, oh yeah, we know that, yeah, we'll do that then, yeah. So, I have taken it apart and given it a good clean. And, um, what it does need on? new belts, because when the spool's full, it struggles to move it. When they're evenly balanced and you've got 50 feet on each wheel, it's not too bad. Um, I've put on a new stop button, a which was off a of Philips cassette player. It's all right. It's all right. It sits, it doesn't sit flush enough. It sits quite proud of the facade. A monitor switch from the Pioneer Tech Deck. A switch. wired selector switch from the same tech deck as a stop stop button, which is a great function on this cassette. Great function. Um, so that's the facade taken care of and all the buttons now replaced. Now, so, yeah, but what I've found out is that you've got a Q flying head new kind stop of feature button. on it where if you rewind it and you have the Q in the on position, was like the start. you can monitor what's being played under the tape that's new. on fast forward or rewind. You can hear it. And the wind speed slider, that. which is spring loaded, that I replaced. Um, this is 
right. that speeds up and slows down the rewind. It's got an automatic stop memory stop on it. So if I set the memory to zero, like I have done, I started, this, when I started talking, I started this recording. No, you didn't. I press rewind memory stop at zero. Um, so there's three functions that I've never come across on a reel to reel before in my limited reel to reel experience um, that make this this just a great machine, basically. I absolutely love it. I do. Um, the VU meters are terrific. You get peak out, red light. Uh, I've only got the illumination on the left channel at the moment because I'm recording on channels one and four. If I switch over to two and four, well, I'm not going to bother, but that would light up. Uh, when it's on stereo, they both light up. It sounds great, and it sounds really great when I plug my telephone and speakers into the outputs at the back. <gasps> there, I tell you what, you are really talking about some kind of a crazy sound. And um, I wrote an email to my good friend today in England and she said to me that um, she's got some new speaker in interconnects and she got a good deal on them so, for a record player and um, it made me think about you know people spending silly money on speaker cables connect um, on interconnection cables like me I bought some cable talk cables back in back in the late 90s I spent 50 quid on on a pair of 30 centimetre cables I suppose there might be 35 50 quid um, and people pay it you know people are still buying cables uh, I suppose the price of this machine new because really the logic the, the, the gist of what I'm saying is makes no sense but what I'm trying to say is that well you can still buy these cheaply I've seen one for 50 euros that seems to be a good buy in Holland. They, they weigh 10 kilos, so you've got to get it. You've got to, you, know, you could be looking at 25 euros, 75 euros, you've got one. Voila. But most of them, well, all the rest of them I've seen, go for about 150. So I suppose if you spend 100, you compare 100 euros on cables compared to 100, but it's, it doesn't make sense anyway, but it's just it's a bit, just an observation on prices and hi-fi and whatnot, you know. And talk about computer technology. How twenty years ago you'd have paid, right, nineteen ninety-five, you paid, you'd have bought a Pentium three uh, with a CRT monitor with Windows. I don't know, was it wouldn't even be ninety-eight, whatever it was before Windows ninety-eight. 95 and you might have not got a lot of change out of 1500 quid now that's just junk it's all junk the monitors just chuck them away who wants an old CRT monitor low resolution fucking useless same with the hardware in the inside the computer just junk basically recycle the interesting thing about this beautiful thing is that it was made in, I have seen a Hi-Fi Vintage Org that dated it, I think it's 75, 76 or 78, it's a bit vague maybe, yeah, not maybe it is, I think it's 78. No, it's less vague, okay, I think it's, and it still functions, it still has a niche, it still works well and it still functions, and it has a novelty niche. Because at the end of the day, when I listen to this on playback, there's no hiss. There is no hiss. Um, it just sounds as if I was speaking in the room. Not that, you know, when you hear your own voice, it sounds a bit... You don't hear your own voice, really, do we? We sort of like talk, and when other people talk, we hear their voices, but our own voices. But when I've just tested this and heard the playback, um, not for the first time, I mean I've heard it over my other reel to reels but on this one it's just zero, zero noise, it's really just pure silent except for when I talk 
you know, the only limitation is this Philips microphone, no doubt. You know, it's not the greatest in the world. It's my, the best microphone I've got with a, with a DIN socket on it. But um, it's slightly novelty still because, you know, the old days where we used to make mixed tapes and do best of and everything. Uh, we kind of like, who is going to... Well, already it's difficult, you can still get reel-to-reel -reel tapes, but who's going to amuse himself to make compilation tapes, and plus with a reel-to-reel -reel tape? It's really kind of like... Viagra for people with nothing better to do, in a way. You know, we've got internet, you've got YouTube, you've got songs on demand. This morning I heard... Um, I did George Harrison song, and um, I haven't got that. You know, I haven't got that song itself. And I was, any song you like, give me love. Oh, there you go. You can hear it straight away. Whereas with this, what are you saying? I've got to go and give me love. Get my record collection now. Give me and record peace my favourite songs off different albums. Exactly. Play back through doing. this. Okay. Yeah. Right then. I can kind of make a case for that. Yeah. But um, at the same time, I can see why it is a waste of time and a slightly obsessional thing to do. Notwithstanding the fact that it's a beautiful piece of engineering. Uh, just look at it now, silently turning away and capturing this um, this information. And the information captured is going to be safe. I oh, know, here come the biker boys. Check them out. This information is, you know, barring a flood of biblical proportions. I'm going to speed this up a bit, I think. It's going to be safe. It's going to be safe. Um, I worry about oh. data on memory cards. You can lose them. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the old analogue stuff, it's, uh, it's a great backup. Well, it's the best backup. We've all got old video cassettes and we just keep on going. Old videos, yeah. Well, keep on going. Just an hour and a half. But generally, tape is pretty good. So it looks great, and um, tape's pretty good. Uses the PA. It's got a built-in amplifier and speakers. Not huge, six watts. Of course, uses a PA. Six watts. But that's RMS. I mean, you know, you can hear it. Uh, what else can you do with it? It's an amplifier, obviously. Um, is what I said. That you. That, yeah. It's, what What do you need it for? What can it offer us in this digital age when we've got mini recorders and we've got. Hell of a paperweight. I think streaming. Well, I'll tell you one thing you can do with it. Yeah, I did that. I checked it out last night. I plugged. I plugged into the line in uh, from the computer, and I had YouTube coming from it. Okay, but then even then, it's kind of like you've got a screen in front of you, and you've got the sound coming out to your right. That's great. Stereo. Maybe, you know, use the sound. Use the telephone. Speak inside the screen. Really. I've got the telephone inside the screen. So. 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 I've got to, next step, I'm going to order some belts for it. Quite cheap. And take it all apart again and take it more deeply apart. Go deep. Uh, I'm going to go deep this time and inspect the the motor. And the two belts on the outside, the two drive belts, or, you know, drive the real belts, they're, they're quite short, they're quite small, not on a huge diameter. One of them is perished. Uh, as I said earlier, it yeah, really struggles with um, shifting the weight, and that's no doubt the need to go deep and change the belts internally under the first skin, if you like. I'm going to go deep. The top skin is this grey and black plastic that we see, and then underneath, like that, and then inside that, get down to the uh, heavy copper cores, the transformers, um, the flywheel. All the gubbins basically, which looked from what I could see, looked very impressive. And again, makes me think of um, Helen's interconnects, all new she got knobs. discount on. But you know, they're, they're 100 pounds basically for a pair of freaking cables. I'm not sure what this would have cost new. I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say 
1500 in today's money more than that let's say 1500 pounds easily back in 1978 you would have paid 350 for three, I would imagine. 350 in 1978, you're back for your answer. For 650. So, that's crazy what a lot of the bird is, you know, house prices in the UK, you've got like the. I read today that first time buyers, 220,000 is the price for a, for a first time buyer. <gasps> no matter. To buy a house. 220,000 pounds. And actually, the reason I set this, um, set this up to record now is because they featured um, a program on the radio earlier about the crisis in the jungle in Calais the jungle between quotes because apparently no you have to say well whatever um, you know like David Cameron says swarm and it's like oh my god you said a swarm somebody else said it was a jungle Mm, and like, oh, you can't say that it's a jungle. It's called the bloody. They call it the jungle. Um, the French decided to call it la, la jungle. I don't know why, but anyway, I was going to record this um, a mission, this program, um, people phoning in and giving their opinion, and uh, it finished before I, before I could do it. I mean, people might accuse me that say you like the sound of your own voice, don't you? But no, I don't know. I'm just sitting here on the kitchen floor, and uh, I've got a lot to say, you know. Uh, like, I was going to listen to the program, but I had to take my dog out. Um, so when I got in, it had already kind of started, and I thought, oh shit! I yeah, I knew it would. So you know, tough. You missed the beginning. And I thought, well, I'm not going to record it like I did with Tony Blair. Um, because it's too long. It's too much hard work. Uh, you're not going to sit. You're not going to sit, Jim, and type and translate for the YouTubers thousands of characters of what tens of characters have rung in and said. I mean, Tony Blair's one thing, that was long enough, that was 25 minutes. But, if somebody paid me, I would. You know? Or if I, was, if I was a rich, bored millionaire, I would. If I had nothing better to do, well, Who wants to possibly. Be a millionaire? You know, my, I'm, I might be more... Um, Usefully employed, just saying to people, here's the recording, have a listen to it. If you've got any questions, um, go to a night school and learn French. Which is, which in itself is a bit of a scandal. Um, what? What did I just say? Hang on, let's put the. Let's see what I said. Um, we're in the middle of... We're, we're at the start of the legendary August holidays. The start of the legendary... Okay, right, fine. Um, we're in the middle of... We're, we're at the start of the legendary August holidays. Which, is, which in itself is a bit of a scandal, really. Um, I think. You know, a country grinds to a halt. What the fuck? It grinds to a halt in, in August. Can't even get a baguette. Because everyone's on holiday. What the hell? That, that is just ridiculous. No, you can, of course. Have you ever heard of, like... Staggered holidays. You can't get a ferry. There's no, there's no excuse for it. If they're in the, if people are in the private sector, yeah, they can take, they can take as much time off as they like. But people who work for the government, huh? No, 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 no. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm going to go out and grow forty cannabis plants, and I'm going to go around selling them. And if a gendarme stops me and says, "What do you think you're doing?" I say, "Well, I'm." I'm doing it, um, it's, it's in the holidays, so, you know, there's no government, right? 
what are you doing working? Oh, you're collecting speeding fines <laughs> and not clearing burning tyres off the road. Okay then, yes. Anyway, the purpose of this uh, of this is just to um, you hear that silence. I don't know. You know, it's either listening to this. You could listen to this being played back, or be it. You're going to hear it on uh, being captured by not the greatest camera. Maybe I could do something with that. I could capture it with a mic. Yeah, I'll try that. Mm, maybe not. You could listen to it, or you could be watching Kim Kardashian and yeah. going shopping. I admit. That's more interesting if you like shopping and women with large breasts and big hips and a pretty face and one hell of a family than this. But on the other hand, you know, this is kind of like, this is kind of interesting and this is better for the planet. All right, Kim Kardashian, she's not going to buy an old, worn-out, apparently-looking, worn-out, reel-to-reel tape recorder. She's just going to chuck it on the dump, <laughs> or should get one of her lackeys to just chuck it on the dump. Whereas I, in my environmentally friendly way, repair it. Uh, it's recycled. Ah. I mm, heard today about America has got to um, make some changes according to Obama. As a father, he is aware of his responsibilities. And um, I'm watching a fly going around on one of these wheels. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've got, a flying pro I've got a fly problem here. But he's enjoying himself there. He's just loving that. I've got an apple tree uh, in the garden, which has not had a good year because of the, the drought summer heat wave. So we've got a lot of rotten apples on the floor that haven't come to fruit fr haven't come to fruition, mm, pun intended. I haven't really ripened right and have gone rotten. because um, really they're ready. They should be ready normally in another three weeks or so, start of September. And I've got my neighbour who's got some chickens. All right. She had the chickens installed in the spring. So a combination of fruit and chicken, this is, uh, yeah, I built a fly trap, but I haven't really captured a lot of stuff in it, but that's another story. Uh, and so I shall say that's enough for me for the moment. Um, I'm going to sign off and just leave you with the fact that I have started to watch The Duelists which is the first film that was made by, directed by, uh, his directorial debut, Ridley Scott. It was made in 1978, Harvey Keitel, and what's his name, Carradine? The brother of Kung Fu. You don't not know Adrian, what's in it. Not Emmanuel. Not, Adrian. not Francisco. No. I'm sorry, Mr. Carradine, I don't remember your name, but you're great in the film. And, um... He's also making Prometheus 2 in January. He's going to start making Prometheus 2 in January. And uh, me and uh, me and Sonny, we hope it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a bit more... A bit more logical than Prometheus. I thought that got the world's greatest trailer. With that soundtrack, ooh, 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 fantastic. I was like, wow. I can remember watching the trailer and getting excited. And then I saw the film and I was just confused. Great moments in there, but I didn't like the, um, the crew. I didn't like the personages. The, the, they were kind of like so routine and so mundane. It was as if they'd taken as if the actors were on the set of an Australian soap opera and they worked for a taxi firm, you know, like, 
the captain was like, what are you two doing on that ship? What do you want? Why are you bothering me? Where the two guys were... needed help. And there were lots of things like that that I didn't like. As well as... Um, I just didn't say anything, no? That's how quiet it is. Yeah. Alright, so bye Jim. A la prochaine. There he goes. <clears throat> Alright, so that's it then. A la prochaine.